How's it going y'all? Let's take a look at how we can write some awesome tests in Golang to make sure our code is performing how we think it is. We're going to go over unit tests, integration tests, and how to mock out functions. So let's jump right in and check out some code that we're going to test. We're going to test this function called calc exchange on date. All this function does is take in some currency and exchanges its value to another currency using the exchange rate on a particular date. This function call here returns a map of currency exchange rates. Let's go to its definition and check out what it does. So an API request is made right here to the URL above, which is where we get our exchange rate data from. So this function makes a network call, and we may or may not want to have this network call being made when we're running our actual tests. This is something we'll see how to deal with, but for now, let's go back to our calc exchange rate on date function. So in the end, this function calculates the value in the new currency and returns it. So how would we write some tests for this function? Well, first, in order to write a test in Golang, it needs to be in a file which ends with underscore test. Usually, you'll have one test file per code file. For example, for our exchange.go file, we will have an exchange underscore test.go file. This will contain all the tests for our code in our exchange.go file. For us, we'll be testing just one function. Go has a native testing package which we'll import. As well, we'll import a really useful module which has a bunch of conveniences for testing called Testify. Particularly, we'll import the assert package. Now in Go, test functions must start with the word test with a capital T for the Go testing framework to recognize that this is a testing function. The convention is to call the function test and then the name of the function we're testing. This function has to take a pointer to the testing.t type. So t is a type passed into test functions which manages the testing state in the background. We're going to be running a bunch of scenarios, so let's define a convenience type for us which represents a test case. It contains all input params that we want to use for our calc exchange rate on date function and the expected return value including any expected error. Now each test is defined using t.run. The first parameter is just a string. This can be whatever you want, but should be a descriptive name of the test you're running. For us, we'll be testing valid exchange rates. The second parameter is a testing function which executes a test, taking the test.t type pointer again. So let's fill this function out. First, let's set up our test cases. Then for each test case, we call our function, check there's no error returned, and check that the value is what we expect. Pretty simple. To run this test is also very simple. We just run go test and we see everything passed. Now what we got here is an integration test. This is because back in the calc exchange rate on date function, we call this get exchange rates USD function, which as we saw makes a network request. Testing involving external dependencies like API calls or database calls are called integration tests. We might want to do this type of test, for example, if we want to check if the values returned from our external exchange rate API doesn't change. Now, on the other hand, I might not really care about this, or even I just want my tests to run as fast as possible, and so we want to avoid these slow network calls. Instead, what we can do is run unit tests. With unit tests, we mock out or override external dependencies with fake results we can control and test against. Let's see how we can do this. Typically in Go, this involves dependency injection, where we would pass in a function as a parameter rather than calling the static get exchange rates USD function. So first, let's define the type of function we want passed in, calling it our get rates func. This needs to take in a date and return a map of currencies to the exchange rates. Now we accept the function as a parameter and use this to get our exchange rates. In real code, we would call this function like this now, passing in the original get exchange rates USD function. In our test code, we can define a mock function to satisfy this type. This will return a predefined list which we can use for testing. Now our test will purely test the logic of our own code and not the API itself. In addition, since we have control of the return value of our API through our mock function, we can now simulate bad data being returned and test our system to make sure it handles these cases as we expect. So we can simulate the API being down, for example, by getting a nil value back for our map of exchange rates. This way we can test to make sure our function returns a conversion error.
Running our tests again with the same command and we pass both tests. Nice. And that's it. That's how you run tests in Golang. Thanks for watching.